from Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Deller. Ralph Single, Johnny. At Mono Guarantee Insurance Company. Oh, hi, Rip. How's Hollywood's most eligible bachelor? Listen, do you know who Hildegard Ransom is? Are you kidding? That gal's coming out party hit the society column of every newspaper in the country. Yeah, I know. So, how'd you like to have a date with her? Hey, wait a minute. Weren't you dating the luscious Hildy Ransom a while back? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was, but I uh, threw her over. Oh, Rip, you just don't appreciate the finer things of life. Oh, no? Well, if you had to put up with some of her wild ideas or crazy antics... So what? What difference does it make? All that beauty, all that money? Look, I ask you. You want a date with her? At company expense. Well, why not? Then grab the first plane you can and fly on out here. Okay, I'm on my... Uh, what's the catch, Rip? I'll, uh, uh, meet you at the Los Angeles International Airport. Yeah, fine, but suppose you give me fine. some idea. Hmm. Huh. huh? Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And now, act one of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Mono Guarantee Insurance Company, Los Angeles office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the delectable damsel matter. Expense account item one, $107 even, Hartford to New York and a DC-7 mainliner to Los Angeles. Single is a good name for Rip. He has a knack for meeting wealthy, important people, particularly women. Yeah, they practically swoon under his spell, and he sells them insurance. I'm not sure I approve his love them and leave them tactics, but it's no wonder he knew Hildy Ransom, heiress to a couple of million bucks. Hi, Johnny. But he hadn't told me why he wanted me to meet her. And I was sure it wasn't just for a date. Daydreaming, Johnny? Huh? Hey, your baggage is right here on the rack. Come on. I'll help you put in the car and we'll take off. Oh, oh hi, Rip. Sure, where's the car? Over here in the parking lot. Hey, what were you dreaming about there at the luggage pickup? Oh, Hildegard Ransom, who else? And I take it your little romance with her, the one that hit the headlines a while back, is all over, huh? Oh, sure, sure. But I got her insurance business. All of it. And Johnny, if I had to, I could live off the premiums of that one account alone. And it must be pretty big. Because if I remember the way you live, fancy clothes, fancy apartment. Well, you can't take it with you, boy. Besides, it's all good for my business. Here we are. Hey, you like this little old truck? The little old truck was a brand new Eldorado Via Ritz. Special paint job, gold fittings instead of chrome. Every accessory you can think of, including a bar in the back seat. Yeah, Playboy, Party Boy, Rip Single hadn't changed a bit. And if you make contacts, make them right where the money is, and if it's a pretty girl uh, that has the money and you can charm her into your arms, baby, you made a say. Okay, okay. Now tell me, Rip. Johnny, did you ever hear of the Cape Star? What's that? Well, it's an emerald. As big as a robin's egg in a 14-carat mounting loaded with diamonds and rubies. A brooch. Value? Nearly 300,000 clams. This Hildegard Ransom owns it? Uh-huh. Or did? How'd she lose it? Well, all I know is that she called me and she said it was missing and that she wants me to go out and have a look. Out where? Well, I don't want that wacky dame to get her hands on me again. Now, you heard of some of her crazy escapades. Like the time she flooded half of the Bel Air estates. The what? Well, she didn't like the looks of a fire plug on her five acres up there, so she had the gardener plant some dynamite under it. Oh, oh brother. Well, I've got to do something for laughs, she said. Oh, the old story of the idle rich with too much time on her hands, huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, that kind of stuff can lead to trouble sometimes. Where is she, Rep? Bel Air, did you say? Well, when she's home, which isn't often, right now, I think it... What the Sam Hill? Oh, sure, sure. All the comforts of home. Here now. 
Hello? All right, just 1121. That's right, operator. One moment, please. I have a call for you. Oh, thanks. Oh, brother, when I get rich enough to put a mobile phone in my car. Oh, it doesn't cost much. As a matter of fact... Fifth single, are you coming out here to see me or aren't you? Oh, uh, well, now, Hildy... It's the fifth time I've called. And, Rip, if you don't do something about my loss of the Cape Star... You call the police. Well, sure, of course. I might have known you would. So they'll tell the papers. More publicity for you in that lousy insurance business. But, Hildy, I, I always notify the police. Well, you know what that means. It means reporters, photographers, cops, half the town falling all over themselves when I get in. Uh, look, Hildy, so if I, you uh, are somebody else, and I don't mean the cops, if you don't get out of here, uh, I'll, I'll cancel every policy I have with you. My own, the houses, the cars, this old tub, everything. Hey, here, will you, you take this, Johnny? Yeah, sure. Hello? Hello. Didn't you hear what I said? Look, miss, uh... What? Who's that? Johnny Dollar. Johnny... So we got you. Well, now we'll have some action. Because you will come out here right away, won't you? Hmm? Well, that depends. But I don't know what to do. The Cape Star Emerald gone, and Rip's so busy he can't leave his office. Johnny, you have to come, please. Well, look... Oh, I, I... knew you would, honey, and I'll be waiting for you. Rip can tell you how to get here. Bye. Uh, uh yeah. Don't be fooled, Johnny. She really is that charming when she wants to be. Okay, Rip, take me to her. Uh, uh, not quite. Huh? That old tub she mentioned is her 165-foot diesel yacht. What? And near as I can guess is about four score and 70 miles offshore. What, well, do you expect me to walk? Oh, she also has a cruiser, a 58-footer parked down at Balboa. You can go in that. Then you'd better swing around, brother. We're driving north. Oh, uh, there's a private airport up here off Sepulveda Boulevard where I keep my plane. Your own plane? Sure. Holy smoke. Act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. And now for another episode in the life of Sergeant Donald Bellwether, my husband. Reba? Uh, Reba, where are you? In the kitchen, dear. I'm coming. Donald, what are you doing home so early? Are you sick? No, no, I'm not sick. I, I came home early to get some work done, but you're going to have to help me. Help you with what? Well, you got me into this. You're going to have to help me get out. Donald, you're not making sense. What did I get you into? Well, it all started this morning. I walked into the lieutenant's office, and I started bragging about how well my wife delivered her speech on safety at the PTA meeting. Oh, that was sweet of you. Yeah, sweet, but the lieutenant was quite impressed. In fact, he was so impressed, he assigned me to give a talk on safety tomorrow at the enlisted men meeting. Well, good for you, Sergeant. You can do it. Well, gee, I, I don't know, Reba. What, what, what do I say? Well, just say that, um... Well, wait a minute. Hmm? Here's some notes on traffic accidents. Just read these aloud. Oh, come Oh, come on. on. Come on, just try them for size. Well, okay. <clears throat> uh, men, what if a disaster wiped out every man, woman, and child in Springfield, Illinois? We'd be shocked, wouldn't we? So would the entire world. Yet, a total of 95,000 accidental deaths occurred two years ago in the United States. That's about 10,000 more than the population of Springfield, the capital of Illinois. That a boy, you're doing fine. Now, go on. And don't think the men in uniform are exempt from accidents. In one branch of the service alone, 600 were killed and 5,000 injured in a 12-month period. On many, many days during the Korean conflict, more servicemen lost their lives on the highway than on the battlefield. Wait a minute, Reba. These aren't notes. This, this is a full speech, all typed and ready. <laughs> That's right, dear. I wrote it for you this morning. You, well, how did you know? Well, your lieutenant and his wife were at the PTA meeting, dear. Uh -huh. Put up job. Uh, <laughs> I see it all now. <laughs> I only hope I can do this fine speech justice. Oh, you will, darling. Well, I'll try. Oh, that's my Donald. That's my doll. And now, act two of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the delectable damsel matter. During the ride from Los Angeles to Balboa in Rip Single's private plane, he admitted to me that he hadn't made all his money in the insurance business. Seems a rich uncle had conveniently died some years before. 
lucky stiff. A rip, I mean. Look, all I know, Johnny, is that Hildy took the Cape Star Emerald along with her on this yachting trip and now it's gone. Yeah, how much of a trip? Oh, Lord knows where she's been. She said she might end up in China, the Philippines, most anywhere. You see, she has the money, she has the time, and she's done everything under the sun that normal people do, so now she keeps looking for the unusual. Anything for a thrill. Yeah, well, when did she discover the stone was missing? She radioed to me today. From out on the high seas? Yeah. She said she was certain she had it the day before that, because she'd worn it. And then when she went to look for it, it, it was gone. Some member of the crew, do you suppose? I don't know. Maybe she dropped it overboard. You mean purposely? To collect the insurance? Now, who knows? Oh, but if she has so much money... Well, who knows? Maybe, maybe she hasn't lost it at all. She just wants company. Oh, look, there's Newport and Balboa down below. I'll circle Hildy's little summer house before we land. Hildy Ransom's little summer house turned out to be a mansion right on the waterfront. And tied up to the long dock was not only the cruiser, but a snappy little speedboat, a small sailboat, and a couple of outboards. All very nice. Not so the skipper of the cruiser. No, my orders the last time I spoke to the Hill tomorrow were to take you out to her, Mr. Single. Nobody else. Look, we just talked to Miss Ransom by radio, and she wants you to take Mr. Dollar out there. And I tell you, my last orders... Well, what... forget your last orders. Hey, I look, said those look, were look. My hey, orders. wait a minute, please. Skipper, have you got a radio on this cruiser? Of course. All right, then. Make contact with the Hill tomorrow. Find out for yourself. Okay, I'll do it. At the same time, you can get a position, okay? We'll see. Well, give dear Hildy my love, or uh, whatever else you can think of. <laughs> Anything that'll keep her from switching her insurance to somebody else. You are a louse, aren't you? <laughs> you don't like me, do you? No. Were you ever really serious with her, Rip? Mm, yeah, sure, but uh, I'm just not the marrying kind. So, Johnny, the field is clear for you. Huh? And if you want to latch on to a few million bucks... Uh, She's, she's really mighty sweet, attractive gal. Well, let me know how you make out, Johnny. Oh, and please, find that emerald. I uh, beg your pardon, sir. Yeah? We're ready to sail whenever the gentleman's ready. Okay, Skipper, let's go. The cruiser turned out to be a dilly, a luxury from stem to stern. And the trip out to the Hill to Mora took much longer than I'd expected. In spite of the powerful engines that sent us through the water at over 18 knots, it was well after dawn the next morning when we hove to alongside the Hillamora. And that 165-foot diesel yacht made the cruiser look like a broken-down rowboat. As for Hildy Ransom, five foot six or seven, she was blonde and she was beautiful, with quick blue eyes that had fun and laughter sparkling in them, and a figure. <laughs> Well, come on, Johnny. Come aboard. And, Marty, you keep the cruiser around in case Mr. Dollar wants to go ashore again. Hi, sir, Miss Pat. Hi, Johnny. Welcome aboard the old tub. Uh, you call this floating palace a tub? Well, after the holes that got shot into it, it's a wonder we're still afloat. You've been shot at? Off Formosa on the China coast. We had a ball. For a while, I thought some of the red aircraft were going to strafe us one night. Oh. But it got too dark for them, and the captain, the old fuddy-duddy, turned off all our running lights, and we headed out to sea again. What under the sun were you doing off the China coast, Miss Ransom? No, it's Hildy. Oh, just finding out what goes on in the world. You know what I really wanted to do? What? Pay a visit to Joe and Lai. Jo the Red General? Why not? But they wouldn't let us ashore long enough without a lot of fuss and bother, so... Now, let's go into my quarters and, and talk about the Cape Stock. Yeah, okay. I could kill that Rip Single for not coming out here, but I'm so glad you could. Hmm. You're even better looking than I'd heard. Huh? Are you as much of a wolf as Rip says you are? Oh, well, now, wait a minute. Okay. I... Okay. I'll find out for myself. It might be fun finding out. Hmm, Johnny? <laughs> minute I began to wonder. Maybe Rip wasn't the only one in this affair who turned on the charm to further his own ends. Hildy Ransom, let's face it, was a wealthy ne'er-do-well who'd do anything for a thrill. Couple her with a character like Rip Single. Yeah, I wondered. But then, walking along the deck with her, I saw something that suddenly changed my mind. One of the crew who ducked into a doorway when he spotted me. Who, I wasn't sure. 
but I had a sudden mental image of his eyes somewhere in the past looking at me over the sights of a gun. Act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, in a moment. Do you know who said, that man is free who is protected from injury? Those words came from Daniel Webster, one of the most eloquent orators in American history. Webster knew that a man could not be free unless he lived in a country which recognized his right to freedom and created laws to protect that freedom. A slave state may say that its citizens are free, but as long as a single citizen can be harmed by the whim of a country's rulers, true freedom does not exist. A man is free only if his rights to freedom are protected. Remember the words of Daniel Webster. They are part of your American heritage. The free man must be protected from injury. And now, act three of yours truly, Johnny Dollar and the delectable damsel matter. <laughs> waited till we got in to report the loss of the emerald, but sit down, Johnny, and I'll have some drinks brought in. Okay, thanks. Now listen. Because of where we've been on this trip, we'll have to go through customs, and there'll be the police and the reporters and so on. And whoever took the Cape Star might have a chance to... Well, what's the matter? That drawer where I kept it. I'm sure I left that closed after I'd hunted for it. And... Excuse me. Johnny. Yeah. Look. Look, it's here. The Cape Star. It's back. You're sure? Yes, of course. Here, look at it. And you're sure it wasn't there before? Of course I am. I turned this cabin upside down. Hildy, this isn't some kind of a gag, is it? What? I mean, you're having me come all the way out here to find something that wasn't lost after all? Johnny. Oh, Johnny, how can you say such a thing? Of course not. But now that you are here, and the star is safe and sound, I think we'll have fun together, hmm? Hildy. I've got so tired of the other guests I have on board. That stuffy old Professor Randolph and his boring wife and Charlie Burton and that girl he's always fawning over. The Cape and... Star was actually missing? I swear it, Johnny. All right, then. I still have a job to do. I want to meet these guests of yours. Also, I want to talk to the crew. Of course, John. But later, mm -hmm. I'll have some drinks brought in, and we can plan ourselves a ball between now and when we put into port. Mm -hmm. oh, yes? Miss Ransom. Yes, Captain. One of the men, one of the crew, name's McCarty. Yes? It looked like appendicitis, ma'am, and I took the liberty of sending him ashore in the cruiser. It'll get there long before we can. Well, of course, Captain. You've done exactly right. Wait a minute. I'm not so sure of that. Why, Johnny? McCarty, huh? Short, dark, with a scar on his chin? Yes, sir. They've already left. The... What? Yes, sir. Ten to one, that McCarty is the man I want. Johnny. Hildy, we got to stop. A radio call to the cruiser brought no response, and I had a sneaking suspicion the skipper of it had a gun in his back, a gun held by the supposedly sick McCarty. And the yacht, despite her size and power, could never catch up with that cruiser in a thousand years. If you're right, Mr. Dollar, we'll radio to the Coast Guard to intercept it. But I couldn't be sure that I was right. And then I noticed the speedboat slung between davits on the yacht's afterdeck. Of course, Johnny. And I'll go after them with you. Oh, no, no, you won't. Just for kids, huh? Please. No. Then six, eight, ten minutes later, however long it took to get the speedboat overside, the first mate and I were tearing across the ocean in pursuit of the cruiser. That cruiser will do an even 20 knots if the opens are wide, Mr. Dollar. But she's no match for this, baby. And pour it on. Come on, you see him yet? You sure do. Get ahead. Yeah, yeah, I see him too. Well, where's the skipper? McCarty's up in the bridge alone. Hey, look out. That puff of smoke, he's shooting at us. Then hang on. I'm going to swerve around. But he's never hit us at this range anyhow. Stay down low. He might get lucky. You got a gun to answer him? No. Well, there's a very pistol. Use it for shooting up the stress players. Well, where is it? This cabinet under the dash. You see it? Yeah, right. It's no match for a 38, but if you can swerve us in close enough, keep swerving. Right. Hey, look. He's having to reload. And get us in there fast. Here we go. Well, let him have it. Let him have it. Yeah. Hey, you 
got him. You got him. Come on, give me another load. Here, Dollar, right here. Watch him, huh? He's changing course. Hey, you're right. Look out, he's turning, he's turning into it. piece things together after the yacht the Hildemora picked us up. By sheer luck, my shot with a flare gun had struck McCarty full on. He was badly burned. And after the smash up, the mate had pulled me out of the drink. By then, the yacht caught up with us. And do you know what he was doing, Johnny? That man who called himself McCarty? Uh, oh, hi, hi, Hildy. Smuggling. Narcotics that he picked up in China. Yeah. He knew he'd never get through customs when we came to port, so he stole the Cape Star. Just long enough to make sure the cruiser would come out to us. He knew I'd send for somebody. Oh, yeah, I get it. Then he played sick to go back on the cruiser. That way he'd avoid customs and the police. Yes, honey. Or is he now? Below, locked up. And after the way you hit him with that flare. Well, now he is sick. Darn it. Darn it? We didn't have to get him into a doctor. Gee, Johnny, you and I could cruise around and... Well, it will be two or three days before we get to port. Three days. And what a three days. But, oh well. Expense account total, including transportation back to Hartford, $230 even. Remarks? <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? You never know what you're going to get into when you take on even the most routine kind of case. Yours truly, Johnny Dog. Starring Bob Bailey originates in Hollywood and is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote today's story. Heard in our cast were Virginia Gregg, Chet Stratton, Barney Phillips, Jack Moyles, and Frank Gerstle. Be sure to join us next week, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Roy Rowan speaking. Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.